It's Midnight GMT. Hello, I'm Susanna Streeter and this is Business Matters on the BBC World Service. In America, the working day is winding down, but in Asia, it's the start of another day. We're connecting the time zones and today we're live in Boston and Seoul. We find out more about the plight of hundreds, possibly thousands of migrants who were stranded on boats near Thailand. Governments are accused of playing human ping pong with desperate people. Hello and welcome to Newsday with Susanna Strita and Alan Kasuja. Coming up, the UN backs French military intervention in Mali. The French government says the operation will last for as long as it takes to push back Islamist rebels. And Lars Armstrong remains in the news. But first, let's return to our top story now and how the escalating tensions surrounding possible military action against Syria have rattled stock markets around the world. Our guests on the programme today are David Kuo from the financial website The Motley Fool, and he's in Singapore, and Peter Marisi, an economist and business professor at the University of Maryland. He's in Washington. Hello to you both. Hello. So, Peter, first of all, Syria may only be a very small oil producer, but what effect do you think an attack would have on the oil supplies coming out of the Middle East as a whole? Well, it depends on how the existing oil producers react. You know, Libyan production is already quite low. In the next half hour, we'll be live in Oklahoma to hear the incredible story of one more resident who survived the tornado. We'll also be in Kenya for reaction to the publication of the Truth and Justice Report. Confirmation of the birth was announced to New Yorkers on big screens and news tickers in Times Square. And this is how the American television network ABC reported the event on its main evening news. This is World News tonight. The royal baby is here. A little earlier, I spoke to the former president of Ireland, now the UN Special Envoy for Climate Change, Mary Robinson. I put it to her that cyclones had hit Vanuatu before, so why was she so sure climate change was behind this severe weather pattern? Sadly, I think we are in a different world. Vanuatu is very vulnerable. It has had cyclones before, but this was a monster. And it was a monster that hit the Philippines not so long ago. And Sandy was a monster that hit the United States. And unfortunately, this is the world we have brought about, if you like. You've already said that an effective response needs to be at a global level. But what does that mean in practice? This is the year when we can make that response. First of all, in Sendai itself at the World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction. This is World Business Report. I'm Susanna Streeter. We're live in Bristol, England, the home of the BBC's Natural History Unit and Europe's green capital for 2015. It's a port city with a rich industrial history. Along the docks, huge cranes still tower over the water. They are relics of the past as the largest ships now stop a few miles away at Avonmouth. But much of Bristol's engineering heritage is still in use. Isambard Kingdom Brunel's famous Clifton Suspension Bridge, which opened 150 years ago, is still a commuter route, and the soaring arches of Temple Mead Station are a hub for intercity diesel trains. We start with the main story from the newsroom. Police in Australia have confirmed that a gunman and two hostages were killed following a siege in a cafe in Sydney, where an Iranian-born gunman had been holding a number of people captive. That's the sum of the headlines that the Chancellor announced today. Let's get back to Susanna Streeter. She's at the Trafford Centre in Greater Manchester. Susanna. Hello, yes, well, we heard from the Chancellor that the economic plan is working, but is that really being felt here in the northwest of England? I am at the Trafford Centre, which is a real temple of retail, and this is a very important time of the year for businesses in the run up to Christmas. Now, of course, all the signs are good. Growth has returned to, to the economy with a vengeance since March. Unemployment is steadily falling. Welcome to World Business Report. I'm Susanna Streeter. Today, a potentially big change in the way Africa does business will be announced. Many industries have been frustrated with the difficulties of trading across the continent with tariffs and patchy infrastructure, a barrier to commerce. You're watching Business Live. Our top story, could a bubble be forming under the financial markets? That's the worry among some as indices around the world have reached record highs in the past few weeks. Okay, Kevin, we've seen this before, before the dot-com crash, for example, and the financial crisis of 2007. Why is this different, do you think? Mm. That's all from the Business Edition. Do stay with BBC World News.